Welcome to Teapot Genies. We're a long way today in Sydney from the subject of your next episode. Yes, today we go to Skibbereen, which is in the southwest of Ireland. We have an interview with a wonderful man, Denny O'Sullivan. He was on the Irish Famine Commemoration Committee, which commemorated 150 years since the Irish Famine. So Billy, this really is all about the potato famine and how it affected Skibbereen in particular. And the result was thousands of Irish people died and thousands more went to America or came to Australia. Denny O'Sullivan, who was on the committee which commemorated 150 years of the Irish famine, um, he participates in the interview, has a wealth of knowledge about the subject, is very passionate about it, and I'm sure all the viewers will really enjoy it. We're talking to Denny O'Sullivan, the treasurer of the Irish Famine Commemorative Committee of Skibbereen here in Ireland. Welcome, Denny. How was Skibbereen affected by the Irish famine? Well, Skibbereen <coughs> is known all over the world as being the worst affected district in Ireland during the famine. And we blame a lot of this on the government of that time and on the landlords, the local landlords, and what we call the middlemen, those that were working for the landlords. But I think it was, we could solely say the blame was on the British government at the time. I think that they just wanted the Irish to die, to die out. And it was one of the ways that they were saying it was a, a man-made famine or a God-made famine. But worse than that, at that time, we were exporting cattle and wheat to Britain during those terrible years. In Skibbereen, we had a population that time of roughly six and a half thousand. And when the famine finished, we were less than half of that amount. And this little patch alone, that are reckoned to be between eight and 10,000 buried. So the 9,000 buried over there, they didn't all come from Skibbereen. Where did they come from? From around the place, it is like when in India, a lot of people headed for the cities from the hunger, for more hunger. Soup kitchens were set up in Skibbereen, but there were so many calling there. In one particular place, they were feeding 4,000 people a day. But I think the government and those in charge, I don't think they cared about the Irish as a whole. Any of them that were lucky enough, they immigrated to England, Australia, America and Canada. Some of them went on the ships that they called coffin ships because they died en route and they never reached their destination naturally enough. So we have a very sad history. Were there many convicts that came from here? We believe so, we have heard of local names going to Australia, O'Sullivan, McCarthy and O'Driscoll, which would be the common name here in the Skibbereen area. But we never know much about them afterwards, you know, because a lot of them were illiterate, they couldn't. A lot of them only spoke the Gaelic language, which was a hindrance also when they travelled. So do you get a lot of people coming from Australia and America trying oh, to find... Quite, quite, quite a few, quite a few. Yeah. especially from America. Mm -hmm. All the records for Skibbereen, for deaths, marriages, births, were kept in the local workhouse, which was the local hospital. And in 1920, the IRA burned down the workhouse because they thought it was known at the time that the British Army would occupy it. And worse look, all the records went up, so we don't have any records going back and it was a pity because there were centuries of records burdened at that time. Mm. It's a tragedy. Isn't it, it is a tragedy because we don't know of people that went in the workhouse that died there mm. and apparently there was up to eight and ten deaths there alone in the workhouse. Mm. All over the country the people were buried where they died, a lot of them. Some of them came here mostly by night. Things were so bad that they were covered just with sawdust for a long time. And we had one 
man that lived to tell the tale. He was buried alive. He was only a child at the time. His name was Tom Gearn. And he only walked when they broke his legs with a belt of the shovel. And that man lived until 1910. The people that are buried here, they're without coffins? Or... Oh God, coffins were out of the question. Yeah. There was no coffins at all. When we're doing a bit of excavation here, you, know, you go down about four inches and you'll still find the bones. Oh, you know, that there are nine pits here. And any of the old people, like my own grandmother and those, the funny thing, they never spoke about the famine, whether they were ashamed or not, I don't know, but you only got bits and pieces, you know. But there are quite a lot of write up in the papers, in the English papers and things that way that you can pick up. But there are many burial places all round Skibbereen in the hills. We have another cemetery at the other side of the town where there are a couple of hundred more, and then for the workhouse itself where there are an unknown number of people buried. But we don't have any records. So do you think anything positive came out of the famine? Well, yes, something positive came out of it, but it took a long time. Well, within 10 years, there were two banks open in Skibbereen. People immigrated in greater numbers, we believe, at that time. They had it tough. They didn't make it, but their grandchildren, you know. Uh, a person that lived alongside of myself, he immigrated. He was the first man to make the rubber heel for the shoes. Really? Or Sullivan rubber heel. His family are still in Boston. They're millionaires and trillionaires, you know. So we had quite a lot of that, but I suppose on the balance, you'll always hear of the goods, you'll never hear of the ones that don't make it. So what was this building here? Uh, in one time it was a church, <clears throat> and it was sacked by the Cromelian soldiers when they came to Ireland. These, uh, the erects all before them in, in Catholic, Catholic churches in particular. So they just destroyed them in their path? They destroyed everything in their, in their goal. What do we have here, Danny? This is the actual famine pits. There are nine of them, as you can see the profiles on the ground. And to see how the thousands were buried, coffinless bodies, as the seen on the small plaque here. So who's responsible for looking after the cemetery? Well, the local authorities, which are the Cock County Council, and they, they cut the grass two times a year. But the local committee, famine committee, see after the famine plot itself here, and the famine pits, as, we, as they are known as. Well, thank you very much, Danny, for your time this afternoon. The talk's been really interesting, and I'm sure the people back home and in America will really appreciate this. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you. And I wish that I knew you were coming, I would have more on the table for you. And I hope the people that will be looking at it will really see what we have done in Skibreen because a lot of them helped us out financially. Thank you again. Thank you.